Welcome to our new podcast series, Communities Talk About Prevention. We're glad you're here. I'm your host, Tom Colthurst. I've served many roles in supporting the prevention of alcohol, tobacco, and other drug use, both within community public health and higher education settings. For several years, I've also supported SAMHSA's Communities Talk initiative. Today, you'll hear how organizations have planned and hosted events or activities to support substance use prevention at a local level. Most importantly, they'll share tips on what worked for them, which we hope will inspire you to get involved in prevention in your own community. This podcast is brought to you by the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, also known as SAMHSA. Communities Talk is a national initiative sponsored by SAMHSA. As a reminder, the views expressed here are not necessarily those of SAMHSA or the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Let's begin. Good afternoon. Thank you for being with us today. And let me ask each of you to identify yourselves, but also tell us what you do with the New Britain Local Prevention Council, and also what your role was with the Community Talks 2021 activity, the social media campaign during National Prevention Week. My name is Omar McDo. I'm the youth advocate for the city of New Britain, and we're located in central Connecticut, probably two hours right smack in the middle between Boston and New York City. I work with kids all day. That's my thing. I also coach football. And how we got involved with the event last year or... The National Prevention Social yeah. Media Campaign back from yeah. May yeah. of 2021. Yeah, I run the Youth Leadership Council. That's part of our local prevention council. It's the youth part of it. And we were trying to figure out an activity to do for Prevention Week last year. And the kids came up with the idea of doing weekly video series on prevention activities to, you know, things that they like to do instead of drink or smoke. So we picked the uh, top five prevention strategies and made videos with that. And it came out fabulously. So that's me. I'll give you Tyshonda. Hello, my name is Tyshonda Wiley. I am the prevention coordinator of the City of New Britain's Local Prevention Council. In my role, I provide education and outreach around youth substance use. So trying to prevent kids from using drugs, from drinking alcohol at an early age and so forth. And now I'll pass it on over to our Youth Leadership Council member. Hi, I'm Annalise Jones. I am one of the original Youth Leadership Council members. I'm an eighth grade student at Howes Academy here in New Britain. I also do competitive dance and I'm a member of the National Junior Honor Society. Great. How did you get involved with SAMHSA and Communities Talk? What motivated you to apply for a stipend and plan an activity and carry it out? Being a prevention professional, being a part of the prevention world, I'm very familiar with SAMHSA. So with me going to SAMHSA, looking at different materials, information for programming that we do, I ran across Communities Talk and I was like, oh, this would be a great opportunity for us to apply for funding to do some type of activity for our community. And who did you involve in your planning? Who were your partners for this particular event? Once Ty made the decision to apply and she ran the idea by me and our supervisor, since I already had the group of kids that I work with, I figured that would be a perfect tie-in and a perfect group activity for them to do. And it's something they jumped on. It made sense to the message that we want to get out to our community and their peers is there's other things to do other than drink and use substances. And other partners? The local the Prevention Council is a part of a larger community-based initiative called New Britain Recovers. It's a comprehensive approach to addressing homelessness, opiate abuse, and youth prevention here in the city of New Britain. So through that initiative, we have connection through a variety of community partners that have that come from different levels, backgrounds, and interests. But their common goal is to have healthy, safe youth here in New Britain. For the May 2021 event, did you have a specific audience in mind? Who were you trying to reach? 
due to the fact that our event was through social media and it was a video campaign, our target audience was my peers, so the youth in our community, their parents, and anyone who can relay this information to them and try to stop substance abuse. I noted from your success story that you were keeping count on the number of views for the various products that you produced. We ran an ad of five different video PSAs. One was for vaping prevention that had 305 views, suicide prevention slash mental health awareness that had 385 views, alcohol prevention that had 905 views, and then marijuana prevention, which had 531 views. We also had a prescription opioid misuse video PSA that had 320 views. And the last one was a supercut that covered all substances. So that was for prescription opioid misuse, marijuana use, alcohol, suicide awareness, and vaping. And that one had a total of 410 views. So we reached a lot of people. Now, is some of that activity continuing? Are you building upon what you accomplished in May of 2021? We've got a really good response in our community with those videos and especially having the kids participate in them. All of our youth leadership council kids, we put up a billboard on one of our interstates that has the underage drinking message on the billboard and it's still up to this day. I just drove by last night and I see that kid's face every time. He's known throughout the city of New Britain as the underage drinking kid because his face is always plastered on the highway. Last year's Prevention Week spawned talks about doing something more tangible within the community. That led to a prevention palooza that we just did. And that involved having a lot of people that we collaborate with throughout the city of New Britain that work with kids and have the same message as we do. We all came together, shared resources. We had resource table. We had free food. We had free entertainment. We probably had about 1,500 people show up. We wanted to target the little kids, so we made, we had a jump house and a lot of blow up toys and stuff to get that message across to the little kids. It was a great event. The police department do midnight basketball all the weekends throughout the summer. Our group, the Youth Leadership Council, collaborate with them once a month to do prevention activities during their midnight basketball days. So we provide a lot of literature, a lot of brochures. We give kids pizza and we play basketball with everybody to kind of enhance that message of, you know, youth prevention. Thinking back now over a year since May 2021, can you remember how did you use the SAMHSA planning stipend, the $750? So the stipend was used to assist with funding for developing the PSAs. So we work with marketing and media. By working with them, we were able, we've we have been able to put out professional, high quality video PSAs that have covered all our events. So again, that stipend assisted with that, that video development. I noted from your success story, it's available on the Community Talks website, that included among the topics that you were concerned about were alcohol-related policies, legislation, such as social host laws, liquor license laws, and regulations. We recently did a student survey throughout for our community for all 6th through 12th grade students, and we found that students reported that alcohol was most easily accessible at home from their parents. So obviously, there is a need to educate parents, adults, that for one, it's illegal to provide alcohol to youth. And then two, it's just not wise considering that youth brain development is still happening until the age of 25. This past Christmas, working with our Youth Leadership Council kids, we said, you know, we want to get that message out there for for adults not to provide alcohol to kids. How best can we get parents talking about it? And so we said, you know what, let's work on a video PSA, like an old school music video that talks about prevention. We came up with a jingle called Prevention All the Way that's sung to the tune of Jingle Bells. And the song includes messaging about not providing alcohol to youth. It's illegal. The social host law, you must obey. A really fun way, but getting that messaging across. We also did a video 
where we highlighted some landmarks throughout the community. And we had a cameo appearance by our mayor who supports our initiative. So we received a lot of coverage on that. And we're even in talks about we're doing another holiday video for this year's Christmas. Do you ever get involved with the Connecticut Liquor Control people, the Department of Consumer Protection? We got involved with the Connecticut distributors. Last year during a coalition meeting, we had all of our partners to do an environmental scan of liquor stores here in the, in the city. We found that there were 28 liquor stores. We found that there was a huge contrast to where the liquor stores were located to also it being like a low income area. From that, we decided to develop a liquor map that went into each liquor store. We worked alongside the Connecticut distributors to design this really nice liquor mat that has messaging to not provide alcohol to minors. And actually that billboard that Omar had mentioned earlier, it's the same design on that billboard that you can see on the highway. So that was a really great partnership with CT distributors. And our podcast listeners who want to learn more about that Be Responsible campaign with the Liquor Merchant Counter Mats can go to your website, which is identified on your SAMHSA Communities Talk success story. So you mentioned that alcohol has been a problem. What about tobacco products? Is vaping a concern? Are those products available to those underage? Yes, they are. Vaping is a concern, especially at the high school level, but it's not so much tobacco, it's a lot of marijuana. As a youth leadership organization, we're trying to take the preventative approach and give the kids education on how vaping is marketed to young people, which is a huge concern of ours in New Britain. And our survey pointed that out, that vaping is considered cool, not as detrimental to health as cigarettes and joints or whatever. And a lot of that information is just false. I detected a number of your PSAs are available via social media. Are you seeing that as a marketing device for tobacco or alcohol marketing? Are you brands or depictions of underage consumption? Is that a concern with social media in your part of the country? On social media, I see a lot of glorification of substance abuse, and I see it very normalized, especially in our community. And so that's why we're trying to get our message across on social media to kind of counteract that message, because a lot of the youth in our community, social media is where they get their main source of news. So if the information they're receiving is not correct, they would not even know. So we have to put out real information that is going to help them and keep them safe. Okay. I noted on your website that you do get involved in surveys. How do you know that you're reaching success? What are you measuring? What are you looking at in a systematic way in terms of problem indicators and changes or trends towards healthier outcomes? I can speak to the student survey that we just did in February. With that student survey, we had a 72% response rate which is pretty high considering that our school district is, it has about 10,000 students. We have a pretty diverse school district. The survey was done in English and not only Spanish, but also Arabic. So it reached a much larger, wider population of our students than compared to if a survey was just done in English only. What are the results telling you over time? You do these in successive years or? We do the survey every two years, but actually this year was our baseline of survey data. We did do a survey a couple of years back, but unfortunately that survey did not cover all of our students because it was only done in English and we only had a 30% response rate. Mm -hmm. So again, this year around, we worked with a different survey company and developed a different survey that, as I said, we had it, we offered it in much in different languages. So we have more students that did take it. You've mentioned some of the local partners that you work with retailers, police department, obviously the schools. What about other realms? What's your relationship with the state of Connecticut? Do they help you out? We have worked with Southington. It's not too far from us. I have collaborated with their prevention coordinator to receive information on what has worked in her community as far as education around prevention. On a state level, our youth are involved in the Youth Task Advisory. There's other youth across the state like Annalise 
who learn different topics around prevention, leadership training. I think it's just really a nice way to get to know her peers who are doing the same work as her. Also, we have done some work on the national level where we attended CADCA, National Leadership Forum, Community Anti-Drug Coalitions of America. We were able to bring six youth with us. Actually, Annalise was one of our students that came, and I'm pretty sure she could speak to her experiences at that conference. Yes. Annalise, you want to say anything about that experience? At CADCA, we got to meet with different coalitions from across the country. We were working with our peers from California, Florida, even like Hawaii. We met some people from very diverse communities. So we got to learn a lot of the strategies that were working for them. We got to share about the strategies that were working for us here in New Britain. And it was overall just a great learning experience. And it was amazing to know that there are other youth who are involved in this task and are interested in the same things as us. Great. And looking toward the future, what looms ahead for the balance of 2022? And if SAMHSA were to announce another cycle for Communities Talk, have you begun to think about what that activity might look like? Right now, we are in the planning processes of collaborating with our local police department with the midnight basketball events that we do. We're going to do a back to school event where we receive donations for book bags and school supplies. That'll be in August. And then in October, we are going to do a highlight on after school programs, being involved in after school programs. It's a big prevention tool that we use to keep kids away from alcohol, away from substance abuse. That's called Lights on After School. It just shines light on all of our after school programs that we do in New Britain, which include the YWCA, New Britain Parks and Recreation Department is huge. The YMCA, the New Britain Boys and Girls Club is ginormous. We have a lot of programming out there and it's just getting the word out there, especially coming off of COVID. You know, people are still a little leery of getting out and getting out and about. And we just want to get the word out that we're fully functional and we're trying to get things back to normal. Well, it sounds like collaboration and communication are both hallmarks of your activities. What advice for other community-based organizations or potential sponsors, school districts, colleges, universities, who might be looking at the next round of Communities Talk? What advice would you have for them in dealing with the federal government and in planning and carrying out an activity that you have to report about? I'm a big kid person and I would get kids involved because kids drive home the message a lot better than any adult can. They're more apt to listen to their own. Their peers deliver a clearer message than I could ever. The biggest takeaway that I've learned is let the kids make decisions and let them talk get their voice out and let them put that message out instead of just being, you know, another adult telling, hey, don't do drugs. Hey, stop drinking. You know, let the kids deliver that message. Any uh, final thoughts from Ty or Annalise? Not only just like let the kids talk, but my thing is just like providing that education. Don't tell them don't do something. Scare tactics don't work with kids nowadays. I would say just be honest, provide them with education. These are the hazards if you use substances and so forth. And then speaking to communities talk, the stipend in itself, we're very grateful for the stipend. We were able to do some great work utilizing that funding, and we hope to do it again. All right. Annalise, it looks like the last word goes to the young person. I am just really grateful to have been a part of this experience and to be a part of this council. I definitely agree that as a young person, When you are taught things by your peers and by people your own age who are more susceptible to listen to them. So being part of this council has really made me feel more important in the fight for prevention. I feel like I'm making a difference and it's good for the youth on both ends of the spectrum, the youth who are doing the teaching and the youth who are doing the listening. So thank you for having me today. Well, thank you for the work that you do in Connecticut. And thank you for being a part of our podcast. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Before we end today's episode, I'd like to welcome SAMHSA's Marion Pierce to share a few final words. Hello, 
I'm Marion Pierce, a public health analyst with SAMHSA's Center for Substance Abuse Prevention, also known as CSAP. This podcast series features participants from SAMHSA's Communities Talk initiative. Communities Talk supports community-based organizations and institutions of higher education across the U.S. SAMHSA provides these groups with stipends to help them host activities designed to educate youth, families, and communities about the effects of substance use and misuse. For more information about Communities Talk, visit us on the web at stopalcoholabuse.gov slash communities talk. Thank you for listening. And remember, no action is too small when you're talking about prevention.